The DualSense makes the most of the opportunities that a new console generation provides. The successor to the DualShock 4 has a stark new look and a redesigned shape that's easier on the hands, which makes it a fundamentally better, more interesting controller. It also has some next-gen swagger. Beautifully implemented next-gen haptics and adaptive trigger resistance create opportunities for more immersive experiences through tactile feedback. Both a careful evolution and a big innovative leap forward, the DualSense sets a strong new standard for console controllers. Though the overall shape has changed just slightly, it has longer, beefier handles which rest and fit in your hands better because they're simply more controller to grip. Weighing 282 grams, it's considerably heavier than the DualShock 4's 215 grams. That weight is well balanced though, and ultimately leads to a more comfortable feeling as you hold it. Aesthetically, the DualSense feels like a dramatic shift from the DualShock 4. Its smooth curves and two-tone color scheme feel like a paradigm shift after three generations of discrete, single-color Sony gamepads. And there's an incredible attention to detail, from the way the side panels flare up just a little bit on either side of the touchpad, to the textured grip on the back panel, which is actually made using tiny, almost indistinguishable versions of the PlayStation face button shapes. The layout of the DualSense comes over intact, more or less, from the DualShock 4, but there are some interesting new changes to some of the buttons, as well as new features that enhance gameplay in exciting ways. The buttons and D-pad push back faster than their predecessors and have a little bit more travel, both of which make them feel less squishy and provide a better sense of feedback. While I wouldn't call them clicky, there is a clear sound and feeling when you fully press the face buttons or the D-pad. In the center column, the share button has been replaced with a create button which pulls up a system-level menu that lets you choose between taking screenshots, recording a clip of what just happened, or starting a new recording. The DualShock 4 touchpad returns, but it's now matte white with an RGB light bar around the rim. Below that, the speaker returns alongside a logo-shaped PS button. Below the PS button, you have the new built-in microphone. The mic looks like a tiny dot on the outside, but it's capable of picking up anything and everything directly around it. In at least one game, it also technically adds extra control options. In Astro's Playroom, you're asked to blow into the mic to advance at certain points. But if you find the idea of having a hot mic in your hands unnerving, there is a thin, clear mic mute button just below the PS logo. If you swing around back, the biggest, most exciting changes deal with the triggers. L2 and R2 are longer, with a deeper pull, which I imagine help maximize the impact of DualSense's two most substantial new features, precision haptic feedback and the so-called adaptive triggers, which create resistance in them to simulate tension or otherwise provide physical feedback. Though the haptics are present throughout the controller, the most interesting precise feedback comes through the triggers. The two features, working in tandem, make the triggers the centerpiece of the DualSense. They aren't just critical inputs, but the primary conduits through which you feel what a game is trying to tell you. Also on the back, the DualShock 4's light bar has been removed, and the micro USB charging port has been replaced with a USB-C port. Battery life is still a low point on the DualSense. In my personal testing, I found the controller lasts around 10 to 13 hours, which is long enough that you don't need to charge it every day, but short enough that you'll frequently find yourself running low on power. Finally, at the bottom of the gamepad, you have a 3.5mm audio jack for a wired headset and copper pickups which allow it to connect to Sony's charging cradle. The leap from the DualShock 4 to DualSense truly feels like a next-gen experience. In playing some of the PS5's launch lineup, including Astro's Playroom, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Bug Snacks, the refined design and new features of the DualSense do wonders for PlayStation gaming. Independent of the new features, the DualSense is Sony's best controller to date. Its larger chassis and longer handles fit better in your hands, making it easier to hold for long stretches. Its buttons are more responsive and have a more satisfying press. And the grip, while only very slight, is enough to hold your hands in place even when they get sweaty. Even if it couldn't do anything new, it would still be a huge upgrade. But of course, the DualSense does do a lot of new, very impressive things. Astro's Playroom, which serves as a showcase for the DualSense's new and old features, shows all kinds of ways in which the haptics and adaptive triggers can be used to make games more immersive and provide a natural sense of feedback. When Astro draws a bow and arrow or gets ready to slingshot himself into a catapult, you can really feel the tension grow in the triggers as you hold it down, allowing you to naturally gauge how charged the launch will be. In another moment, a large creature walks towards Astro, and you can feel what direction it's coming from and how close it gets based on how the controller vibrates. To me, the most impressive use of the haptic feedback was purely immersive. 
In the opening cutscene for Spider-Man Miles Morales, Miles rides the subway and you can feel the train shifting and tilting on your fingers. The rumbling sensation in the controller diminishes and intensifies as the train turns or shakes because of the train's speed. In theory, the DualSense's microphone is a great equalizer, as it means that every PS5 player using a DualSense always has access to a microphone. In practice, the built-in mic works fine in a pinch, but it isn't a replacement for a good headset. The mic can clearly pick up your voice without having to move the controller too close to your face, but it'll also pick up any noise in your immediate vicinity, like a phone ringing or the sound of a mechanical keyboard typing notes. The bigger problem, I found, was that the incoming chat audio from other players comes in through the DualSense's internal speaker when you're using the controller mic. While the microphone could hear me easily, I found it difficult to hear my teammates over the game audio coming through the TV. Playing on the PS4 version of Apex Legends on my PS5, my partners and I had to rely primarily on nonverbal communication because I couldn't always hear them over the sounds of a firefight. With the DualSense, Sony has both made a more comfortable gamepad for traditional gameplay and introduced some very exciting new features. The haptics and adaptive triggers make an immediately noticeable difference in games that make use of them, and they offer the exciting potential for new and interesting gameplay experiences. Except for battery life, which remains a weak point, the DualSense controller is everything that you want to see in a next-gen upgrade. For more PlayStation coverage, be sure to check out our reviews of the PS5 and the Pulse 3D headset. And for everything else, keep it locked to IGN.